In today's video, we'll be painting up Jamie Lannister from the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do with this model is give it a bit of a clean and make sure you prime it. So I've just primed it here with a nice and simple uh, light grey primer. And we're going to start the process off with painting up his flesh using Barbarian Flesh from Army Painter. And there's only a very small amount of actual flesh exposed on this miniature. So all we have to do is paint up Jamie's face here. Nice simple step. Okay, so now with Jamie's face painted up, what we're going to do now is come in with some skeleton bone. I'm going to be using the skeleton bone to be painting up Jamie's blonde hair. Um, I find skeleton bone is quite a good colour than going for uh, yellow. Uh, the skeleton bone being a sort of uh, khaki, sort of creamy colour is uh, a lot more realistic in terms of a blonde hair colour, especially once we finish it up a little bit later on. Okay, so now with Jamie's golden hair all painted up, we're going to be moving on with some mahogany brown now. And we'll be using the mahogany brown to be painting the inside of the shield. So we just want the inside here as a nice bit of a relief around the outside where the metal working is. But we just want to be painting just the inside going all the way up to his arm on the inside of the shield. So just being a little bit careful to avoid painting everywhere on that part. Okay, so now we have the inside of a shield complete. What we're going to be doing now is moving on with some basalt grey. And we'll be using this to be painting up Jamie's pants, as well as his gloves that he's wearing as well. So we want this nice uh, dark grey colour to do this. It's going to stand out against a lot of the very uh, bright and shiny colours we're going to be putting on him later. So adding in these little dark spots will give us a bit of uh, differentiation when we break up the colours a little bit later on. So just being a little bit careful now to apply this so we don't have to apply too many other coats in later steps. Okay, so now with his pants and gloves painted up, what we're going to be doing now is moving on with some vampire red. And we'll be using this for some very standout parts of uh, Jamie here. We'll be using it to be painting up his, uh, his skirt, I believe, here. We want to be giving uh, some nice good coverage on here. Now remember, paint into like uh, reds and such are quite uh, harder colours to be painting in such big wide areas so we are going to have to do multiple coats on this part especially to give off that nice smoothing effect and try and avoid streaking as well now we also want to be doing the inside of jamie's shield here where we can see a lot of this nice fancy design so we're going to read here first so we can lay all this down and then we can do the gold filigree and stuff over top of that in a much easier way than trying to come in and get all the red around there Okay, now with all those nice built up layers of red, we can now move on to somewhere else. So we're going to start off with some gunmetal here. And all we're going to be doing is we're going to be using it to be painting up his uh, chain mail he's got here, just underneath the shirt, or uh, scale mail I believe it might actually be. Uh, so just in between the joints here, and as well as his sword. And you can see it's going to be... Uh, it could be a little bit tricky to get into some of those areas, so if you need to switch to a smaller brush, that's perfectly fine. But we're going with this because we're going to be using another metallic color uh, next in the step. So we want to get all these fiddly parts out of the way first. Okay, now with all that gunmetal all painted up, we're going to be moving on to our main color that we're going to be using here, which is going to be greedy gold. And of course we're going to be using this for Jamie's shining gold armor that he wears into battle. So we're going to make sure we get a good coverage of this everywhere. Uh, all over the areas we pretty much have left that are metallic. So we want to go leg armor, our shin and our knee pads, uh, his nice big chest piece he's got on him, as well as his uh, gauntlets as well. So we also want to just do the very nice designs that he has on his shield as well, and the outer rim too while doing this. So if you want to, you want to use a really lighter touch here, just being careful. If, if you need to, switch to a smaller brush to get in these details don't be afraid to do that because we want to try and avoid messing it up as much as we can so just giving everyone a nice coat and waiting for it to dry and then going over it with a second coat to give off that really nice smooth gold look and color that we're after here for his armor okay now with all jamie's gold and glorious armor complete we're going to move on now with some dirt spatter and for the dirt spatter what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing up his uh leather working that he has on him with this so this is just his uh scabbard for his sword he has a, a little leather belt on him as well and just the straps inside of the shield as well we want to get in there with the dirt spatter so 
again I'm using a slightly finer tip brush than I was using just before so I can really get into those areas and try and avoid painting over places where we don't want it to so just be as steady as you can here but it's okay we're still on the basing stage so we can still tidy up as we need to okay now with all this leather working complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to move on with some deck tan and the deck tan we're going to be using to be painting up Jamie's cloak that he's wearing now I'm doing this in the deck tan color because I want it to uh, represent the king's guard that he's a part of and king's guard they have a sort of uh, off white to a white cloak that they wear so i wanted to be uh, truthful to that and what he has but by all means you could carry on with the red that he has on a skirt carry it all the way up there so he's in full lannister red but i wanted to keep that uh, visual that he's still uh, gold cloak here on there and they have those distinctive uh, white uh, cloaks that they wear especially in the show anyway so that's why i went with deck tan here okay so now with all those layers complete and dry we've got time to move on to some wash so starting off here with some flesh wash we just want to be placing this just on jamie's skin trying to avoid the hair as much as we can as well because we use a different wash for that so just trying to get in that face if you need to come in with a smaller brush to get just the area we need for this Okay, so once our flesh wash is completely dry, we're going to move on now with some Seraphim Sepia. Now the Seraphim Sepia we're going to be using for Jamie Lannis's blonde hair. And I find that this gives off a yellowish tint and gives off a, a pretty decent uh, blonde looking hair combined with that skeleton bone. So you can see here he's sort of got like a nice golden blondy hair with that Seraphim Sepia really bringing out the, the yellow and the tint of the... A skeleton bone there so it's, a, it's my go-to combination for blonde hair at the moment so we just want to make sure that that is completely dry and we're not pulling all over the face and places like that okay so once that's completely dry what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be moving on with some agrax earth shade now the agrax earth shade we want to be focusing on the areas where we don't have any of the armor we're just avoiding the armor here so we want to be going of course over our scabbard we've got here over his red uh, skirt he's got over his cloak uh, on the inside of his shield as well we don't want to forget that uh, we've got that nice brown we can go over his uh, pants and his gloves with this just everywhere that we do not have any metallic so being careful to apply this in places especially where it can run since we have so much metallic on this miniature as well so just being a little bit careful and being very selective where we're applying it and trying to avoid very big pooling spots since it has nice deep folds in there as well so all you have to do with that is if you've got some real bad pooling it's come in with the brush and you can suck it up immediately with the just the bristles of the brush okay so with our agrax earth shade all completely dry what we're doing now is using known oil now with known oil uh, i really like the effect that it gives off when we apply it to metallics especially over any metallic but this i'm going to be a little bit more selective with it this time that and breaking apart from what i usually do and i'm just going to be applying it to the silver areas that we've got here so everywhere we place the gun metal and avoiding the gold for now i'm not going to be using known oil on gold for a change i've uh, learnt of a awesome wash to place over gold colors so i'm going to try that out here in the next step Okay, so once that known oil is all dried up, what we're going to be doing now is using Reichland Flesh Shade. And this here is apparently a very good color to use over gold washes. Uh, I've looked online and uh, some people have recommended it to me, so I thought it'd be a great chance to try this out, a technique I never use. I always use known oil over anything metallic. So switching it up, I think, will be a good idea. And this is supposed to really bring out the gold colors and give off a realistic gold effect, so can't wait to see how this turns out so of course we just want to be applying it everywhere over the gold and trying to avoid any pooling anywhere else and we've got some nice deep ridges and designs on jamie's armor as well so having a little bit pool in there is a good thing but we don't want too much so just avoid too much overflow okay with all that wash is all dried up it's now time to go move into our highlighting area so coming back with our deck tan now what we're going to be doing is of course just picking out the high points on our cloak that he's wearing here so giving off those nice folds this is actually a quite a good model for doing uh, highlighting here we've got these nice big open folds that really uh, point to where the sun would be naturally shining so it's really nice and easy to pick out some of these spots so being uh, a nice easy thing to do is really good for beginners as well on this model 
Okay, so now what we're doing is we're going to move on with Bright Gold. Now, now Bright Gold is a lot uh, brighter than our Greedy Gold that we used for our original armor. And now with this uh, nice wash we've got on here, it's really giving it that nice, deep and rich, uh, I'd say pretty realistic gold look. I, I'm actually really enjoying this Ruckland Flesh Shade over top of a gold wash. It really does give off a more natural uh, gold look. So I think that's a design... Uh, feature I'll be using it definitely a lot more when I'm painting over gold armor but for now we want to be focusing that bright gold which is super nice and bright onto all the high points of our Jamie's armor and there's some nice little indicators and ridges and stuff to pick out on here as well and I'm also using mainly the side of my brush rather than the tip to get those nice points okay so now with those gold parts highlighted we're going to come in now with dragon red which is slightly uh, brighter than our vampire red that we're using so this is going to be good for our highlighting here as well so we want to be just hitting this nice ridge here that we've got on uh, jamie's skirt as well as there's a few little high points in the folds that we've got here as well it's not too much but we want to be careful where we do this because we don't want to uh, touch it anywhere that we've already got it, especially since it's so close to that cloak which is a completely different color so we want to try and avoid as much of that as we can and luckily red is a, a reasonably thin paint so you can slowly build it up to the highlights which will make it a little bit easier in the transition for you rather than having a very uh, stark contrast in the colors so this uh, red can be quite a good way to build up a little bit extra color a little bit more confidently since it's a little bit thinner paint Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is coming back in with the skeleton bone. And we're just going to be picking out, of course, some nice highlights on Jamie's here now. We're going to be picking out uh, a little bit of this. We're just going to be sort of avoiding the, the cracks in the hair. As much, well, I shouldn't say cracks. The, the little parts where you can see uh, Jamie's hair separation in there as well. So just being very careful. And I'm just very lightly applying it in a sort of streaking fashion to give off uh, a hair-like texture to the paint. Okay, now with Jamie's hair complete, we are basically done. So all I'm going to be doing now is just coming in with some black and painting up the base, covering up all those bits of paint that have fallen splotted everywhere. But remember, this is the point now where you can uh, base Jamie in whatever uh, basing scheme you have for your army, or you can just have it as simple as this, as a nice either show-off piece, or you're not quite sure what you want your army to be. So a nice black, simple base is the best to go with here. completed painting up Jamie Lannister from the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game and I hope this video has been helpful for you guys whether you want to follow along or you just enjoy watching me paint up some cool miniatures I hope you enjoyed the fact that I uh, have switched up Jamie Lannister just a little bit by going with that uh, cloak to represent his time in the King's Guard as well just sort of uh, giving a little bit more story to our Jamie Lannister here than just giving him a red cloak but as the golden boy of uh, the Lannister house I hope I've given him justice that he deserves so I'd like to thank you guys all for watching and I can't wait to see you all in the next video